You're probably looking at the title of my talk right now and asking yourself, what the heck could this kid know? And you'd be right. As a 20-year-old, I have a lot left to learn. I'm going to give you that. But in the last five years, I've had a couple of wild experiences. And I'm going to share them with you, hoping that they mean as much to you as they do to me. So my name's Alex. Uh, if you've ever wondered what a Canadian looks like, here you go. Uh, I am the son of immigrants. I grew up playing hockey. I was basically raised on skis, uh, and I speak French. So you're not going to get any more Canadian than me. Uh, so when I was 12, I invented a novel navigation aid uh, for the visually impaired. And this year, I was lucky enough to become the Queen's Young Leader for Canada. So when I was 12, I was walking around downtown, and I met a woman on the side of the road. Not that woman, wrong woman. <laughs> <laughs> she was standing on the corner of the road in front of the crosswalk, but she wasn't moving, she wasn't crossing. She was just fixed in place. And she wasn't lost either. The expression on her face was one of fear, and she was trembling. So I thought that was kind of strange behavior. So I went up to her to see if I could help. And I looked into her eyes as I got close, and I realized that she was blind. She started telling me her story. Her guide dog had just died, and a new one would cost $40,000. So in the meantime, she had been given a uh, white guide cane, but she had scrapped using that because, for example, it didn't help her to cross the road. Losing her sight had taken away so much more. It had stripped her of her confidence and her independence. So I walked away from that encounter, and I was stunned, and a little bit emotional as well, actually, because for the first time, I realized that the visually impaired did not have all the help that they needed. 285 million people on this planet are visually impaired, and most of them don't have people helping them. So I went uh, back home, uh, and I ordered a whole bunch of robotic parts. And I thought that coming up with a solution might be fun as a hobby. But I wasn't a programmer, I wasn't a coder at all, so I had to find help. So I went and found a group of inventors in the US. And this was basically uh, a group of 60-year-old guys who just love building stuff. And they were renting out this massive warehouse, uh, and it was basically uh, a playground for their imagination. And to me, it was paradise. So I don't know if you've ever worked with American techies before, uh, but they can't wait three minutes before telling you everything under the sun about their work, which is great. And they're itching, trying to connect you with everyone from their coding buddies to their great Uncle Pete. So that's exactly what they did. They connected me with inventors from South Africa and Argentina, older inventors. And these creative, brilliant minds became my mentors. So over the next two years, I began to flesh out my idea. Uh, and it was a very frustrating two years. But when I was 14, I had come up with a product, with a prototype that I called the eye belt. So the eye belt basically had one sensor mounted on your belt. And if anything came in the way, the user was alerted. So I took the eye belt to the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, the CNIB. And to make a long story short, it didn't work at all. The device, technically, it was flawless. But the, the feedback I got and the response I got kind of sent me back. It was clear that I didn't truly understand the problem. So I went back to the CNIB and I told the patients, forget about the eye belt. What's it like to be you? What's it like to walk in your shoes? And the answers I got were some of the most revealing um, conversations that I've ever had. I learned that some of the patients were not completely blind, but many, if not most, were scared to leave the house because they didn't feel safe outside of them. They would only leave if they had a friend by their side. They weren't looking for some uh, high-tech product, high-tech solution. They were looking for trust. So a couple of weeks later, I was in art class. Uh, I am a big painter. And for me, a blank canvas uh, where you can just create something new is like an addiction. It's very, very exciting. So I was painting this picture of Steve McCurry's Afghan girl and I was finger painting. And I realized that as I was running my fingers over the canvas, I could feel all the grains and texture. My fingers were that sensitive to touch. So why could I not direct the visually impaired using their hands? So that's exactly what I did. I built a little joystick that sits in the palm of your hand, and it rotates automatically to show you where to go. It also tilts to show how far away you are. 
So in many ways, it's like having a friend by your side 24-7, holding your hand, leading you to your destination. It puts the trust of friendship back in the user's hand. And the patients loved it. So I call, I call the final prototype uh, the iAid. So I'm going to show you a quick video, um, a quick demo of one of the earlier prototypes of the iAid, uh, which shows the joystick component in motion. So I'm going to have to leave this room to my left. Uh, so you're going to see the joystick just in a minute. Swivel, I follow it, and know where to go. So the joystick is providing me with turn-by-turn -turn directions, and I can feel it very easily and know which way to move. So in another uh, couple of seconds, you're going to see me have to turn to the left. So the joystick is going to swivel. I turn, follow it, and know where to go. So next summer, I'm going to Botswana. I'm going to work with the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust. And we're going to be working on the first program to provide free eye screening to uh, kids, to school kids. And the specific goal is to end blinding trachoma and river blindness from Botswana. But this is also going to be really foreign territory for the iAid. I've never adapted it for use in a developing country before. And I think the key to success would be to really understand what the needs of the population are before I make any drastic changes to the device. So as the uh, iAid started to pick up traction, the media who covered the story started to pay me in a very specific way. Suddenly, I started having all these terms thrown at me. Uh, whiz kid, pro with technology, a wonder kid. But these all made me really upset. I'm used to giving speeches to a crowd that's about a foot shorter than all of you. I work with young people. And when I get cast in this kid genius kind of role, it makes young people think that what I do is unattainable. It makes them think that they couldn't have come up with the iAid. When in fact, it's the opposite. I'm not a kid, a teen inventor, a teen genius. I'm a kid who had an idea. I didn't have any special access to a lab or prior knowledge. I had 100 bucks worth of robotic parts, access to the internet, and a love for building things. My success was not limited by being a normal kid or by my age. In fact, my age is actually an asset to me. Uh, I just started working with a car company uh, and we're developing a new technology to stop teens from texting and driving. But they specifically asked me to work on the project because I was young. I'm in a position to truly understand the problem and find a solution that can actually work. So as I started working on the IA, people told me I was mature for thinking of a solution that could help other people. But the truth is a little bit sadder. I started working on the IA because I thought it would be fun as a hobby. The IA didn't start out of complete selflessness. Actually, it started out of a little bit of selfishness. So this is my call for help. I am living proof that all it takes is a normal kid with a wild idea to come up with something special. We have to take the time we have and couple it to our talents. We have to pull ourselves out of our comfort zone. We have to push ourselves out of our own shoes. And most importantly, we have to learn that creativity and ability can be normal. Thank you very much.